I call the Honourable Member Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Speaker. New Zealand First initially supported this bill to the Select Committee, but can do so no longer. Not because of what the bill says, but because of what the bill leaves out. It does do some good things. The Justice and Electoral Committee, in its inquiry, recommended several amendments to the Electoral Act, and this bill will implement some of them, but only some of them. There are three very good areas of change that are promoted by the bill. Firstly, it provides as an option for full online enrolment using electronic identity uh, verification. And secondly, it provides for the greater use of easy vote cards, which will simplify and speed up the issuing of ballot papers and reduce special votes. And thirdly, the integrity of elections will be enhanced through amendments to rationalise and make transparent the provisions that regulate the, the disclosure of election donations and loans and the filing of election expenses. But I do specific, especially uh, want to mention clauses 44, 46 and 47, which clarify the position to ensure the aggregation of contributions to donations for the $1,500 threshold and the $15,000 threshold for contributions to donations in clause 48. That's good law, Mr Speaker, and will be supported by New Zealand First. And it's unfortunate that, unfortunate that we will not be able to vote for the bill for that reason. Concerning loans to political parties, we are glad also to see the provisions in new sections 213, 214A and 214C especially. Those sections provide that a party may only enter into a loan with the authorisation of the party secretary and only the party secretary may enter into a loan on behalf of the party for election purposes. And a person who enters into an agreement or an arrangement of some kind for the purpose of circumventing those sections will be guilty of an, electoral, an illegal practice. Section 214C imposes an obligation on a party secretary to file with the Electoral Commission each year a return of a loan entered into during the year for an amount exceeding $50,000 and those entered into in any previous year with an unpaid balance exceeding $15,000 and those entered into for the year for an amount when that aggregated with other loans yields an amount in excess of $15,000. Those are very important provisions and New Zealand First agrees with them. And again, it's a shame that we can't uh, vote for the bill for other reasons. Mr Speaker, there are two areas of serious omissions with the bill. And the first one, as the committee itself uh, is aware, concerns election broadcasting rules, which did cause problems during the 2011 election. The Electoral Commission noted that the statutory tests of what constitutes an election and programme in the Broadcasting Act and an election advertisement in the Electoral Act have significant differences which cause difficulties when the Commission is called upon to consider complaints about broadcasting. Both tests require an assessment of whether the programme or advertisement appears to encourage voters to vote or not to vote for a party or candidate, but they differ in the exemptions made. In the Broadcasting Act, it is stated that nothing in the prohibition on paid election programmes, quote, restricts the broadcasting in relation to an election of news or of comments or of current affairs programmes, unquote. While the exemption similarly in, in, in the Electoral Act is not restricted to news or current, current affairs, but applies to, quote, the editorial content of a periodical, a radio or television programme, and a publication on a news media internet site, unquote. So two different exemptions altogether. Submissions suggested removing the separate electoral broadcasting provisions from the Broadcasting Act and confining, confining the provision to the one in the Electoral Act, and New Zealand First agrees with those submissions. The Justice and Electoral Committee actually recommended aligning the statutory tests of election programme 
in the Broadcasting Act and election advertisement in the Electoral Act. But nothing, Mr Speaker, appears in this bill. It is an urgent matter and it should have been dealt with in the bill. In addition, the Broadcasting Act's prohibitions regarding election programmes should not be limited to the election period and should apply consistently to both political parties and to broadcasters. The Commission acknowledged that it would be more consistent to apply the same rules within and outside of an election period. And, Mr Speaker, that's really just common sense. But, Mr Speaker, the other glaring omission uh, regarding this bill is concerning our MMP sy system. There needs to be an end of the coattailing provision in the Electoral Act, and that should have been attended to as well at this time. We have seen many reasons for that over recent times. It is something that recent polling shows that the vast majority of people in this country want to see an end of. It is time that simply winning an electorate seat should not result in coattailing for whatever low percentage of the party vote is currently enabling a party without 5% of the list vote to bring more members into Parliament. That's just silly. That's unacceptable. There, there should be only one threshold for list seats, and that is 5% or more of the list vote irrespective of whether a party gets an electorate seat. That is what people want. That should have been addressed. But we know, of course, why it is not being addressed. And that is because the National Party needs the likes of Banks and Duns and order, any, any additional order, seat they can order, bring in. Order. Mr Banks or Mr Dunn. Thank you. Thank you. And any additional seats they may be able to bring in and National wants to try and get as many uh, additional MPs through that particular gerrymander as it can. This government is prepared to gerrymander the system and to do whatever else is necessary to get enough seats in this way. It's not good enough. It's a cynical manipulation of the system, and National obviously has no genuine respect for democracy in New Zealand by failing to make the changes in these ways that the people of New Zealand now so clearly want and need. Mr Speaker, I want to finish by um, making a reference to SOP 412 in the name of Mojo Ma uh, Mathers. New Zealand First has some concerns about that. The SOP seeks uh, regulations for disabled voters to be able to vote by means of devices that enable them to vote without assistance. Now, Mr Speaker, we are not sure why that is currently a problem and whether this provision would fix it. We expect that people will still want and need assistance. Uh, we think it's an essentially a management issue and it's not one that needs to be addressed in legislation. The Commission, of course, should ensure privacy so that disabled people with assistance, if they require it, can vote privately and have adequate provisions in that way. But we don't really know what votes by means of devices mean, and we have concern about costs. If it means facilities are needed at all booths and for all forms of disability, then we are concerned it will cost a very large amount of money and is not really required. We would like to hear the Green Party discuss that and tell us why it is required, but as it is, we would find it difficult to support that SOP. But, Mr Speaker, it's a shame, as I've said, that New Zealand First is unable to support this bill any longer, not because of what it does do, because it does do some good things, but because of those two glaring problems. One, the failure to address the difficulty with the Broadcasting Act, as I've described, and secondly, the disgraceful failure to ensure that the coattailing provision in the Electoral Act under our MMP system isn't abolished as it should be. We know what I call the Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'm delighted to...